Eliza Lucas Pinckney was a very important figure in American history. She was the first one to grow indigo, which is this plant right here beside me, to grow indigo successfully here in America. And she grew it on the coast of South Carolina, right around Charleston. Her father had several plantations there, and he had to go to a different place. He had to go to Antigua, where they were from, down in the Caribbean and she was left to manage these plantations on her own as a 16 year old, which is just amazing. And she started to grow indigo looking for a way for her family to make money to get out of their financial problems. So we know that indigo gives us a dark blue dye and it comes from the leaves of this plant. You might be able to see flowers on the plant. Um, you might be able to see seeds. They kind of look like um, tiny little bananas but that's not part of the dye, it's the leaves that's the important part. And in just a few minutes, I wanna show you how we dye with indigo. It's a fascinating process. All right, so we've seen the plant growing in the garden, so now I'm going to show you the actual dye. And so you saw the plant growing down there, and I mentioned that we take the leaves and we put them down in water and we let them soak they would get agitated, you would have like a stick or a flail and you would be stirring this around um, and you understand it would be a much bigger container than this, like a big wooden vat that would be like a small swimming pool. Um, so this is just a tiny example. After that gets agitated, then it starts decomposing and the blue dye starts to drop down to the bottom of the vat where they would then drain off the water from this and then be able to make the indigo dye from it. So I've got a little bit of powdered indigo that um, has been dried and it's just sitting on the plate. It's kind of hard to tell, but that's a very dark blue. And I put it in here in water. And indigo is really unusual because it doesn't dissolve in water. Um, you can kind of think about like if a fish is in water, it's in the water, but it's not part of the water. It doesn't dissolve in the water, so the fish is just swimming in it. So when you put indigo in water, it's in there, but it has not dissolved and it has not become part of that water. You have to put some other things in there, some other chemicals. So once you do that, um, then the indigo changes from a blue to a green or even a yellowish green. And I'm about to put some white fabric down into this dye and show you what happens. So I have some fabric right in here. This is cotton fabric and it's in water um, because that helps it sink down into the dye a little bit easier. So you can see this is just like a white handkerchief, a white cotton handkerchief. So I'm gonna slide it down into the indigo very carefully because one of the chemicals that was put in here, one of the things we did to this dye was to take the oxygen out of the dye and that's what turned it that greenish color. So it's been in here long enough and I'll pull it out in just a second. I'm sure I'm gonna get it on my fingers and I want you to watch because this is gonna look kinda of like magic, but this is science that's happening. When I pull this out of the water, it's not going to stay the color that you see. So we know that indigo is blue, right? All kinds of different shades of blue. All right, watch this. So I'm gonna pull it out and look what color it is. Okay, watch, it's changing already. So you saw it was kind of a yellowish green and I'm gonna hang it up on the line here and straighten it out and you'll see the difference that it's changed to already. We've gone from a yellowish green to now Look at these colors and it's not going to stay like that either as it dries as the oxygen um, combines with that indigo molecule it's changing from that green color to blue and I can see some of it already right here has really gotten to the indigo blue what's happening students is there is oxygen in the air that's combining back with that indigo molecule and it's changing it back to blue. 
Now I have another piece of fabric. I'm going to dip down into the indigo and we'll see what this one does because this one you'll see I've got some clothes pins on it where I have twisted the fabric up. Oops, I got some blue on it from my fingers, but that's okay. So see where the fabric is kind of twisted and pinched together? What I hope is going to happen is it's going to resist the dye and in some of those places it's going to be much lighter. So you can see it down in here. I'll stir it around just a second. When it comes to the front of the glass, I hope you're able to see that it's greenish in color. And, and that's one of the really neat things about indigo is it is one color in the vat and then when you pull it out, it changes. All right, here we go again. Pull this out and watch for that yellow green color. And it's already starting to change. And what I'll do is hang it up on the line. And then when I take these clothes pins off and unwrap it, we'll see what we get. So let me put this right up here. Continues to change. This is great fun, but boy, is it messy. You can see my fingers are already getting pretty blue here. But it will wash off my fingers. If I get it on my clothes, it will not wash off. It is permanent once it's on the clothes. All right, let's see what we have underneath here. You see where it's white? So that's where it resisted the dye. And we're going to have a pattern there where that was all wrapped up. So some of the dye then, or some of the fabric rather, was not exposed to the dye. So we'll have kind of a crazy pattern on there. Thank you.